the MedTech pitch is back, and so is the stellar cast of judges that will choose this year's winner. So my name is Zina Laura Perkins, and I'm the CEO of Skin Name and Real Heart. I'm a biomedical scientist as my background, and we're making the world's first artificial heart as a structure and function like the human heart. And we're doing this because of heart failure, which you heard about in the first pitch. And this is when the heart cannot pump enough blood. And the first patients that we're going to target are those that are on the waiting list for a heart transplant. Because the 10-year European data shows that one patient dies for each three patients that get a transplant. And these are unnecessary deaths that you could avoid with an artificial heart. You save, you, you buy time and you, you buy yourself an option as a patient. But then the big impact and the big problem is, of course, there are so many patients that never get the opportunity to get a heart transplant. The major organ shortage is like 8,000 hearts in the world, and we estimate about 2.5 million patients dying and about 64 million patients globally with heart failure. So that's why we made the real heart. So it's the, on the inside is a pump that has two halves, just like the human heart, two atria and two ventricles, like the human heart. And in the middle is a valve plane, and it moves up and down with each beat, just like the human heart. So we have a natural pulse-tile blood flow, and on the outside, we are working with, you know, this should be nice to handle by the patient, so it should be silent, low weight, and long battery life. Our preclinical results, then we've compared with a market-leading device using human blood in the laboratory, so we see that we have less than half the blood damage. So we think that this should translate to less less side effects in the clinic. And in vivo, we've seen no hemolysis, no thromboembolic events. We've also seen that we have a physiological pulse dial flow, blood pressure, and oxygen saturation. And we use an automatic control for the left-right balance and for how much the heart should pump. So we have pressure sensors to sense how much blood comes in and then automatically control that it matches the body's needs. So we met with the FDA so we know what we need to do for the preclinical studies, and we're gathering this within the next 12 months. And we have a collaboration with the Swedish hospital to do the first in human. We also have interest from other clinics in Europe and the US. Our team has uh, the knowledge of several different heart pumps, pacemakers, defibrillators, stents. We really tried to gather lots of expertise competence, and then we build up on top of that with academic partners. So we collaborate with several different international universities and have several different industrial partners to help us along the way. Our patent portfolio is eight patent families. We have protection until 2037 in the main markets and in the emerging markets. And we, it covers more than just the real heart. So we're also looking for different licensing opportunities. We've designed it for automated production because we think it's really important that it has low cost. Because we think that artificial hearts will be, in the future, what pacemakers used to be. Nowadays, it's completely normal, and there are lots of them, and they cost very little. So we need to be able to meet that price pressure in the future. And if we would implant in 6% of the waiting list in the EU and the US, this would be about 40 million euros in revenues. So we estimate to reach the market that we need 35 million euros, and we receive the EIC accelerators. This is a nomination of 15 million euros equity investment. So what we're looking for now is for investors that want to join us for the match funding of this. And we've received lots of different grants raised about 5 million euros so far in grants and about 20 million euros in Sweden in equity. So I think this is great, but it doesn't really matter what I think. So I'll just leave you with the quotes of our uh, different key opinion leaders that have gone in touch with our products so far. Thank you. incredible problem that you're tackling. I, I imagine that you probably need really robust clinical data for an artificial heart, which is going to be pretty expensive. But maybe I'll ask Kwame with your, your background with the FDA. I mean, what, what does something like this need to really get through? And, and it's got to be a lot of money, I would imagine. Yeah, I wish uh, my colleague, my old colleague at the FDA, his name is Eric Chen. He oversaw LVAS for years, and now he works for regulatory at Abbott. But I remember them being <laughs> extensive trials over with pretty extensive follow-up. Um, 
it's a long play, it's a journey, but um, I think there's promise in, in your technology. So it's the primary endpoint for bridge to transplant would be six month follow up. And um, I think that for maybe for destination therapy, we're looking at about two years follow up, I think. And does this replace the LVAD then, or, or was it No, clear? so LVADs are a complementary technology. So a lot of LVAD patients actually develop right heart failure. So these could be first getting an LVAD, and then you remove the whole heart and put in the artificial heart for the biventricular failure. So I just, I did a quick, some quick math on your capital needs. Looks like you're gonna need somewhere in the neighborhood of 70-ish you know, million euros to get to market. Um, and you talked a little bit about other sources of capital. Do you have foundation capital or other non-dilutive sources of capital that you think you can tap into? Um, so I think you asked about different sources of capital. Um, so we're stock listed on Swedish NASDAQ. So this would be one way to raise. And then uh, we also have this equity uh, nomination from the EIC. And we're in discussions with the European Investment Bank. Uh, they uh, gave venture debt to our competitor in France of 30 million euros. So they go up to 50 million. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sh perhaps I missed it. So you are publicly listed? Yes. How did you achieve that prior to having a product? So it's not uncommon in Sweden, actually, to, to list free revenue. So we're on NASDAQ First North Growth. Um, if I remember correctly, there was a company called Karmat. Um, they had a few issues during their trials, and um, could you just elaborate a little bit on your differentiation to that product? So the Karmat is quite a complex design, so we've aimed for a more simplistic design, and uh, they also have sort of manual production with their cow membrane that is part of their product. Uh, we have received European funding, grant funding, to do automated membrane production, so that's what we do. Uh, we're also next door neighbors to ABB, who do industrial robotics, so we try to see what else we can automate to make sure that the cost of production be as low as possible. Does the device need any form of maintenance once it's, uh, like, installed? So it's typical for heart, failure, uh, heart pump patients to go back to the clinic um, regularly uh, for maintenance and you need to be on a blood thinner, uh, which um, compared to heart transplant, those patients need to be on immunosuppressive therapy for the rest of the life with the side effects including cancer. Um, you don't have that problem with an artificial heart. And then of course you need to be trained in how to manage your uh, batteries and how to you know, connect to, to the main grid at night. But we gather lots of data from the controller, so we'd be able to detect if something would happen. Okay. Thank you.